Good day, chemist in Japan でございます。Well, I've made this video primarily at the behest of Y. Googie.、Uh, I talked to her quite a bit online, at least recently,、um, and she's been very persistent and nosy in her questions about what goes on in the lab. Not that that's a bad thing or anything,、uh, it's just interesting. Because usually, when I start talking about chemistry, most people, their eyes glaze over and it's almost as if they're asleep, yet their eyes are open、um, and they kind of just tune me out until I'm done talking about it and then life goes on. But、uh, she's asked a lot of questions, and so I had this very ambitious idea of making、uh, a video showing you know, the entire process beginning to end of how I do a reaction and everything. And、um, so I tried to do that. Uh, and I realized very quickly that it was going to take longer than I thought. And, and, I re- and while I was making the video, I, I, I realized that I didn't have time to make the video. So I stopped. And、um, I, I basically, making the video took time away from being able to do other things. And I really needed to do three things at, at the same time. That day, it was a very, very busy day.、Um, and so I kind of just stopped.、Um, but that's okay. I have plenty of material now for a couple of videos, I think. And,、um, and I'm going to be doing that reaction again, undoubtedly. I do that reaction、uh, a lot, actually. For many different things that I make, I use that reaction. So when I pick it up again, And、uh, maybe next week or a couple of weeks,、um, when I do it again, I'll just pick up where I left off and、um, talk about other things、um, from, from there on. So,、um, so anyway,、uh, so I'll show you what I have so far. One of the things that we have to do for our solvents, especially if they're coming out of a bottle that has already been opened, is we have to pre distill them before it can go into our solvent still. So, down here we have triethylamine. Uh, which is being heated in this flask with calcium hydride, and from there it goes up into this column. Now, the heated gas goes up the column, and the cooled liquid comes back down until it reaches a state of equilibrium where the gas goes up and the liquid comes down. Now, these glass beads there help improve this equilibrium, and、um, it's a way of increasing the purity of the gas that comes up to the top of the still here, into the still head.、Uh, So, the, li- the liquids are dripping back down, but some of the gas makes it up here. As you can see, it's, it's condensing there and goes into the s- still head and over into the condenser. Now, if you look hard, you might be able to see the gas kind of, it kind of flutters there along on the side of the glass and then condenses. And the gas goes into this, cooling, into this condenser where it's cooled and turns it back into a liquid. Now, it, it comes and drips right here and goes into the collection flask. And as you can see, it comes out nice and pretty. Uh, transparent and colorless, is which, which is what we want. And、um, it's kept under nitrogen. This,、uh, it's just being distilled under nitrogen、um, because the triethylamine will oxidize in the air, which is actually what I'm removing is、um, ox- uh, oxidation products、uh, for purity. And so this, this solvent, once I know it's pure, I'll, I'll run some tests on it to check for purity. And once it is pure,、um, I will put it into the,、um, the big solvent still for us to use in our reactions. Now, you can kind of be able to see, maybe if you look hard, you can see the gas kind of, kind of like flows in and then immediately condenses to a liquid. And you might be able to see it, at least that's what I was trying to show you here, was the, to show you that、uh, the gas condenses and then drips in there. And so it's、uh, nice and pretty, colorless, transparent. And、um, that's, but it started out as, as this over here, kind of a yellowish liquid. With the calcium hydride in it, and now it's all nice and pretty. Over here, we have a, a benzene still.、Um, we, one of the people in our group needs benzene, and this, this still, which I actually maintain, it, it freaks me out.、Uh, benzene, benzene is one of the few things that actually scares me. I do not like benzene at all. Uh, but it's in there, and, and the blue color, the blue violet color, is caused by an indicator of dryness. So, as long as it's dark blue like that, I know it's, it's dry. 
But the gas, when I have it turned up high enough, it will come up into this bowl, come out that outlet right there, condense inside this bowl. There's also a condenser above uh, to condense the, the gas back to liquid, but then it comes down here. It has two ways to go. It either go back to the flask, or if we have it set, it'll come over here to this flask. This is just a placeholder uh, to, to keep the, the outlet uh, clean, but that's how the benzene still looks like, and it scares me. I hate benzene. All right, I got my lab hair on. Yeah, it looks good. Good lab hair. Could be better. Yeah, lab hair. Okay. Good morning, chemist in Japan. But basically what I'm going to show you is a couple of things that I do that are very routine. routine. I'm going to get some liquid nitrogen, uh, which most people would consider very tedious and boring, but I actually love doing it because it deals with liquid nitrogen, which is very, very cold. Uh, 77 Kelvin is its boiling point. Um, I think that's... I can't remember what the other temperatures are. I could do the math, but it's 77 Kelvin. Very, very cold, basically. One of the coldest uh, liquids that exist. And then I'm going to set up a reaction. And I'm going to take you through the entire steps of that, as boring as that will be for you. But um, it may be interesting from the standpoint just to see how chemistry is done at least this kind of chemistry. Um, but basically what I do here in the lab and research as a chemist is I use known reactions. There's a several reactions that I use. I have a pool of them. I use known reactions to make new compounds. And then once, we make the, once I make those new compounds, um, we characterize them, which means we figure out what it is, and then we figure out its properties. Now specifically, what we do here in our research when we characterize these compounds is we're, we're concerned with their um, luminescent properties. Uh, basically what happens is when, I, when we make these compounds, if you shine them with a UV light at certain wavelengths, they, then they take the UV light and then emit light at other frequencies, and we are looking at what frequencies of light do they emit once they are radiated. Anyway, so I'll start off by going downstairs and uh, getting some liquid nitrogen because I'll need that, not for anything really important. I have to protect the vacuum pump um, and we do that with liquid nitrogen. Um, and so I'm going to take it out of there and put it into there. Now there is no pump here, as you can see, no pump to pump the liquid out. What happens is the liquid nitrogen inside slowly turns to a gas and the gas puts pressure on the vessel and so what I will what we use is, is that pressure to push the liquid out of the doer into my doer. And when it does that, it gets very cold, it freezes this line uh, and um, makes things very cold in here. Uh, but actually this doer hasn't had liquid nitrogen in it for a while, so it's at room temperature. So as soon as I start putting liquid nitrogen into it, it's going to cool the vessel, but it's immediately going to turn that liquid nitrogen into gas and it's going to shoot out until the inside of the doer gets cooled enough for the liquid to stay. So, yes, I am going to turn it on now, I think. Now that tube is down in there a little farther than I wanted it to be, but oh well. But the tube has already frozen. <laughs> and as you probably can see, the, the valve there is already freezing. What you see right here, kind of flowing down, is actually water. Water in the air, the humidity, comes in contact with the very cold valve and immediately flash freezes and falls. And so that is water freezing out of uh, the air. Perhaps by the time this is done, this will turn completely to a block of ice. It may not be long enough though. Then you can already see it forming right there, the ice. And on the tube, which is frozen. Yeah, that tube is down in there much further than I want it to be. I may not be able to get it all the way through. Or perhaps. So that's it. That's all there is to it.